What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and today I'm going to be talking about some clear market trends in the old school RuneScape market about when prices go up and down seasonally. Basically, over time there is a change in the amount of players on old school RuneScape. I, and I'm sure many of you guys, are a clear example of this with things like school, university, work, and just life in general. There's actually specific times throughout each year where more people play more or more people play less old school RuneScape. Now with more players in the game, more people want the items in the economy, so the price of these items usually goes up. But with less players, like during a school period or university or in a time of a year where work is heavy, the price of items goes down with less players. Now, a very clear indicator of how the old school RuneScape market is responding is membership bonds. Since these bonds can be bought with real money, the price of these bonds basically indicates how many people are playing and how many people want bonds. Now, one very, very noticeable trend in the price of the bond is when it's coming towards the end of the year. So from November to January, the price of bonds goes up almost every year. If we go back here from about November, about here to January, the price did go up a lot and then the same happened here and it is happening right now as well. Usually around October to December, there is a lot more players on old school RuneScape simply because people are on holiday. Now, of course, the holiday times and holiday durations are different across the entire world and RuneScape obviously is an international game, but the majority of the players come from the United States and in the United States, there are holidays at the end of the year and at the middle of the year. If you look even more closely at the graph, you can see that the prices dip after the start of the year when people go back to work and then the prices usually go up around the middle of the year. You can see in 2017, this exactly happened. It spiked by the end of December and then went straight down in January, February and March. So the price went up from March all the way until April and then kind of stabilized out as there were more people on holidays. And then as the end of the year drew nearer, the price went up as even more people were on holidays. Now I want to specifically talk about two item categories that change in price over time, depending on the season. So the two categories are one, weaponry and armor, and two, supplies like potions, food, arrows, runes, anything like that. So just a quick disclaimer before I go ahead, you always need to keep in mind that the old school RuneScape economy is also influenced by new updates. A lot of these items have gained or lost value due to updates and not even updates directly related to that item. It could be an update revolving around that item or that needs that item within the update like Saradoman Brews and the Inferno, for example. Now, this graph of the Bandos chest plate does not really have a lot of fluctuation, but you can see this gray trend line coming through the middle and you can actually link up some very clear trends. So now we're going to talk about the Saradoman God Sword and look at what it has done seasonally throughout the year. Now, we can see here that at the start of the year, it was at about 43.8 mil and then Judging from the grey trend line, you can see that it gradually picked up the pace throughout the middle of the year, died off a little bit in August, but then picked it up again towards the end of the year, all the way until the start of the year in which it crashed back down, which I think players that are doing Slayer were slaying over the Christmas break and then finished their Slayer grind and had to get back to work or uni and would like to AFK skills. They dumped their Saradome and God Swords, crashing the price a little bit and leaving it quite low for the year. But now once again, as the mid-year holidays picked up, it picked up a little bit, calmed back down in August, and, and currently it's on the way up, but it is in October right now. So now I'd like to talk about the cannonballs because these are items that very clearly fluctuate seasonally, but with recent updates like the new gargoyles and a few speculative updates, there has been a lot of fluctuation recently. But if we go back to 2015, you can see that at the start of the year, the price of cannonballs remained pretty low at about 180. And then as the middle of the year picked up, they went up to about 240 at one point then died back down by August and picked themselves back up by the end of the year, reaching about 250. Now, of course, as people went back to school or work or whatever, 
At the end of the year, the demand of these cannonballs went down with less players and the price also went down. Now, I'd also like to talk about the supplies now and the first one is lobsters that I'm going to show you. And the reason why I picked lobsters is because they're both free to play and pay to play. So the price of bonds, like hypothetically, should not have much of a correlation to lobsters because they are a free to play item and the demand of bonds indicates how many people want to become members, but there are still very clear trends in the price of lobsters. Now, as you can see here, as the end of the year draws nearer, the price of lobbies went up very, very high, and then gradually crashed until again, the middle of the year spiked up really hard again, crashed back down by the third quarter of the year and then gradually picked themselves back up by the end of the year. And I know exactly why this is happening. This is because as people go on holidays, they'd like to go free to play PKing or do free to play stuff or there's new free to play players and they all collectively would like more lobsters than there is in the economy at these specific times, December, January, June, July times. And this leads to big increases in the prices at these times. And the same can actually be seen in stamina potions. Now, as you can see, it's kind of stable from the start of the year. And then nearing the middle of the year, it picks up the pace a little bit, comes back down by September. And then October, November, December picks up the pace again and then straight back down as the start of the year happens again. Now, my theory behind stamina potions is that people that love skilling or things like agility or questing where you have to run a lot, with more players in the old school RuneScape community at the time, there are more demand to do these skills and the price of stamina potions go up. But one last example I want to show you guys is the Saradoman Brew 4. And the thing about these is at this time right here, so around this time, the 5th of September-ish 2016, the raids were announced in old school RuneScape and everyone thought you would need brews in order to do raids, which you sort of do, but now you don't really need to. Nonetheless, the price went up heaps during this time and continued to go up until they announced the Inferno, and then the price spiked even higher. But once the Inferno was released on the 1st of June, the price of Saradoman brews rapidly fell, and the main reason for that is because the Inferno was too hard for many, many players. Now, in this video, I have shown you guys the seasonal effect of the general old school RuneScape prices, but there is, of course, these exceptions that I'm showing right now, the Saradoman brews, where updates very particularly affect the price of items. But the things you can take out of this video is that during the times that there are more players online on old school RuneScape, the price of items like weapons and supplies go up. And when people are back at work or at school, the prices of items go down. Now, I'm sure you've probably thought of this idea in your head before, but the main reason I brought this video to you guys is to show that these items actually exist and items are in the old school RuneScape economy that are changing depending on the season. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you learned something kind of cool about the old school RuneScape market today. If you'd like to see more old school RuneScape videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be uploading way more regularly now. If you did enjoy or learned something, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.